Artificial general intelligence is the goal of AI researchers. LLMs are cool, but companies are designing ways for them to be able to see as well as talk. And Microsoft has taken a new step with its Cosmos 2 multimodal large language model, which we get into on this episode of AI Focus. We'll also get into another paper outlining Microsoft's other recent project, Phi-1, which can achieve state-of-the-art coding while being smaller than any LLM designed for the task. We're going to see why bigger isn't always better. And stay till the end of the video because I'm going to test the Cosmos 2 model for myself to see just how well this new AI can see the world. Let's get into it. Since the Transformers design, it was discovered through something called scaling laws where the performance of a neural network increases as you increase the amount of computing or network size. But in the first new paper from Microsoft we're going to look at, entitled Textbooks Are All You Need, they present Phi-1, a new LLM for code. It's significantly smaller than competing models at 1.3 billion parameters, and it was trained for four days on 8 A100s using textbook quality data from the web. Phi-1 proves bigger isn't always better with its emergent capabilities and impressive evaluation. Researchers proved that with high quality data, you can achieve the same level of performance from large scale models with much leaner training. Needless to say, this is amazing, but can also lead to reducing the environmental cost of training LLMs. Here, you can see a variety of LLMs trained for code and how they performed on the human eval benchmark. And the only two capable of beating Phi-1 are GPT-4 and Wizard Coder. It scored a 50.6 on Human Eval and a 55.5% on the mostly basic Python programs. This is absolutely insane when you consider how small Phi-1 is at just 1.3 billion parameters. Compare Phi-1 to Google's model with 540 billion parameters and the difference is mind-blowing. Phi-1 is trained on what they call textbook quality data partly generated by GPT 3.5 and partly from web sources. Then it's fine-tuned on textbook exercise-like data. This bar graph is a visual representation of how higher quality data increases performance. The orange represents the performance of models trained on the stack data set, which are standard sources of text data for code generation. The green represents performance of models based on the textbook way of learning, and the dark green represents the same concept with their fine-tuned models. See, training from a dataset like Stack isn't optimal for teaching a model to plan or reason algorithmically. And here's why. Number one, many samples aren't self-contained and require additional context to understand. Number two, typical examples don't contain any meaningful computation. And third, examples are skewed towards certain topics or use cases, resulting in uneven distribution of coding concepts and skills across the dataset. A human would be frustrated trying to learn from this type of data and this paper hypothesizes that the large language model is no different. So they concluded that they should give the LLM data like a good textbook would, in a clear and thorough manner. With this approach, LLMs could achieve state-of-the-art results in code generation while using way less compute. The training for this consists of three datasets. First, a GPT 3.5 generated Python textbook dataset. Second, a filtered code language dataset. And third, a dataset of Python exercises and solutions. The filtered code dataset comes from the Stack and Stack Overflow datasets, which contain over 35 million samples and files. GPT-4 is then used to determine which of these samples would have a high educational value for a student whose goal is to learn basic coding concepts. Here's an example of a high educational value and a low educational value. Here you can see an example of the synthetic textbook's text. The synthetic textbook was created to cover a wide range of coding skills, concepts, and scenarios that vary in difficulty and style. The synthetic textbook from GPT 3.5 consists of heavy natural language text intertwined with code snippets. Furthermore, the topics in the textbook promote reasoning and algorithmic skills. The code exercises dataset consists of Python exercises and solutions. This is an example of a generated exercise by GPT 3.5. Each exercise is a doc string of a function that needs to be completed. With this dataset, the goal is to have the model be able to perform function completion tasks from natural language instructions. The filtered code language and textbook datasets are together known as code textbook and are used to create the Phi-1 base model. 
but fine tuning with the code exercises creates Phi 1 by introducing emergent capabilities and improving the generation of simple Python functions. After fine tuning, the model could use external libraries outside of its training and could manage algorithmic tasks. Here you can see when given a prompt, Phi 1 base struggles with logical relationships, while Phi 1 can answer correctly. In this situation is a Pi game that asks the model to generate code to move a ball. Phi 1 base fails to follow the logic of the task. Phi 1 small doesn't have the capacity, but Phi 1 achieves the task. Phi 1 shows us that we can create textbooks on, I'm guessing, any subject to create smaller models that are highly efficient in their respective area. And that's huge. But now let's move on to something even huger. Cosmos 2, the ability for LLMs to see like they never have before. But before we move on to Cosmos 2, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Multimodal Large Language Models, or MLLMs, are here, and they're making waves. MLLMs, in general, can grasp nuances in language, analyze images, and use these capabilities for more advanced tasks. The newest one is Microsoft's Cosmo 2, and will further influence the way AI can see the world. But before we get into that, let's briefly gloss over its predecessor, Cosmos 1. Cosmos 1 from Microsoft is a multimodal large language model capable of perceiving multimodal input, following instructions and performing in-context learning. It was a big step for aligning vision with large language models. In this figure, you can see Cosmos 1 at work, completing visual explanation, visual question and answering, and web page question and answering tasks. But Cosmos 2 is unique because it gives MLLMs the ability to ground themselves, making them more effective. The concept of visual grounding is simple. If humans can refer to objects they see, then grounding capabilities allow AI models to do the same by associating words with images they represent. An AI model in this instance could reference an image of a yellow banana while producing accurate textual information about it. This very technique put Cosmos 2 in a very interesting position on the AI totem pole. This means that now a human can ask an AI about a specific region in an image and an AI can interpret that region with its geographical coordinates. Cosmos 2 lays the foundation for embodiment AI by improving on tasks of vision and language with its grounding capabilities. If you're asking what embodiment AI is, it's a field of artificial intelligence that focuses on the development of intelligent agents that have a physical body and can interact with the world in a meaningful way. If AI had a body and could move, in theory, it could learn from this and interact with the world accordingly. Grounding capabilities in a model's text response now means that words in a prompt can correlate to certain areas in a picture to produce more thorough and accurate responses. The model's grounding feature also enables it to provide visual responses like bounding boxes that are more precise and clear than textual responses. This figure shows examples of this concept, featuring visual grounding, grounded question responding, and bounding boxes to name a few. In this example, Cosmos 2 is able to name specific details about the image, like the snowman's scarf, the hat, and the campfire, all thanks to its grounding capabilities. So how does Cosmo 2 actually work? Its training model uses the old reliable transformer architecture operating on a next word prediction task. Cosmos 2 combines its predecessor Cosmos 1 with a web scale grounded image to text dataset for its training, which also contributes to the model's efficiency. Cosmos 2 uses this dataset to make accurate correlations between words and images, and it's like the model was given a huge library of books and images to study from. Researchers then created a pipeline to connect noun phrases from captions, otherwise known as text bands, to the spatial positions of respected regions in a picture. The spatial coordinates are then turned into location tokens, which can correspond to text tokens in a unique way. A link is then created between the location tokens and the corresponding text band, and this is what allows image regions to connect to text phrases. Let's look at this visual representation of the process. First, noun chunks are extracted from the caption, and all abstract nouns are removed to reduce noise. The image and noun chunks are then placed into a pre-trained grounding model to obtain the corresponding bounding boxes that separate parts of the image. 
At the same time, step two of this process expands the noun chunks into something called referring expressions. This allows the model to ground complex linguistic descriptions. Training for Cosmos 2 required 256 V100 GPUs and took only one day to complete, which is crazy to me. After training, the model is instruction tuned so that it can be better aligned for human instruction. This is done by combining vision language and language datasets with the training data. Cosmos 2 is an MLLM capable of grounding and referring thanks to the coordinates produced by bounding boxes over image regions. This also allows it to provide visual answers and ground text output to the image, providing for way more accurate and comprehensive responses. Cosmos 2 was evaluated on multimodal grounding and referring tasks to test its capabilities as well as language and language perception tasks evaluated in Cosmos 1. First, we'll look at its performance on multimodal grounding. As you can see here, the phrase grounding task requires the model to predict the set of bounding boxes based on a given phrase from a caption. So the model needs to predict the locations of each of the phrases in the caption like a man or a blue hard hat. The location tokens are then converted into bounding boxes. This table shows how Cosmos 2 performed at this task and it demonstrates the model's ability to create high quality locations. The next evaluation is the referring expression comprehension task, which encourages the model to look for the object described in text. It basically refers to the model's ability to interpret phrases like on the left or bottom right. Table three shows how the model stacks up against the competition on the same task. The scores for Cosmo 2 may seem low, but it becomes more impressive when it's being tested on zero shot capabilities while the other models weren't. This means unlike the other models, Cosmos 2 is being tested on previously unseen examples. This is promising. Both these tasks require Cosmos 2 to generate location tokens to be converted into bounding boxes for evaluation. It allows us to see just how good the model is at grounding text descriptions to the visual world. Next, Cosmos 2 was evaluated on multimodal referring. This evaluates how well the model can understand image regions via bounding boxes. Previous multimodal LLMs could only refer to images via detailed text descriptions, but Cosmos 2 can refer to images visually using bounding boxes, which is cooler and more effective. The model was evaluated in this area with the referring expression generation task, which aims to create detailed descriptions about specific objects in the bounding box. The model was tasked with creating a description for an object given its location tokens, and it performed really well when compared to a fine-tuned speaker listener model. Next up on evaluation is perception language by way of image captioning and visual question answering. Cosmos 2 was compared to Cosmos 1 on this task and it's still competitive, all while having its grounding and referring capabilities its predecessor doesn't have. Next was language tasks, and Cosmos 2 shows comparable performance with the competition here. Now I'm gonna try out Cosmos 2 for myself and see just how good it really is. So here's the online demo that you can find on GitHub. And I'm gonna go ahead and upload a picture that I found on the internet. And I'm gonna see how well the model can interpret it. So this image has a lot going on, as you can see, some type of festival. And I'm going to select detailed because I want a detailed description. And I'm gonna hit submit. And this is the result. Oh wow. So I'll read this description. It says the image captures a lively street scene in the Bronx, New York where people are walking their dogs and enjoying the outdoors. Wow, it knew that it was the Bronx. That is scary. There are several people walking their dogs on the street with some of them carrying umbrellas. In total, there are at least six dogs visible in the scene with one of them being carried by a person. The street is lined with various dining tables and chairs, providing a comfortable and inviting atmosphere for people to spend time outdoors. So not only can it label things that are in the picture, as you can see here, it says their dogs, their dogs. It, it, it knows that it's in the Bronx, New York. It, it's interpreting the actual atmosphere from just the picture alone. And you can see the bounding boxes that were created. This is very impressive. Let's, let's do one more example because it was so impressive. All right, let's see how it interprets this picture of Jay-Z and Beyonce at the Louis Vuitton fashion thingy. I'm just really interested to see how it will interpret this. It says Beyonce and Jay-Z are seen walking hand in hand as they arrive at the ball main show during Paris Fashion Week. And as you can see, the AI knows better about what this event is than I do. It gave us the real name of the event from a picture. Beyonce is wearing a bright yellow dress while Jay-Z is wearing a black suit. 
They are surrounded by a crowd of people with some of them holding handbags. In the bounding boxes, you can see it says a bright yellow dress. It says Beyonce. Beyonce has her own bounding box. Jay-Z has his own. And then in this bounding box, it says crowd of people and crowd of people again. Okay, so I absolutely have to do just one more. And I'm gonna do this candid photo of, of Albert Einstein and this random woman and the background behind them and see what comes up. I, I wanna see what I can learn about this image. Ah, uh, so with this description, we see our first example of Cosmos 2's weakness. It says, an image of a man and a woman walking down a street. The woman to the left is holding a snake. Now, the woman to the left, she's in fact not holding a snake, she's holding a scarf. So that's, that's one error. It has Albert Einstein labeled as a man, which is technically true, but I was hoping it could tell me that it was actually Albert Einstein. It labels the street in a bounding box, but it doesn't label any of the cars. I'm thinking it's because it's in black and white. You know what that calls for. Another example, in color. Okay, here's a color image of Albert Einstein and a random man at the beach on a rock. Let's see what happens. So the description says an image of Albert Einstein and a man sitting on a rock by the water, which is true. But when you go to the picture, you see that the bounding box for the man and Albert Einstein are actually switched, which is weird. But they do have a bounding box for the water and a rock. So I'd say it's still impressive. Okay, so I'll link this in the description so you can play around with it. The new grounding feature in Cosmos 2 makes new technology possible in fields like e-commerce, robotics, and visually impaired assistance systems. Imagine an AI being able to scan an image of the Golden Gate Bridge and then recount its history and provide facts about the architect. Grounded multimodal language models are the first step of human-like comprehension for AI. Combine this with the new textbook approach for LLM learning, and we have a pretty exciting road ahead. I mean, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And by the way, Meta's doing some pretty similar stuff. So click that video on the screen to see what they're up to. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.